Hi, everybody. Thank you guys for joining us. Uh, this is the Denton Matters mayoral candidate uh, interview with Keely Briggs. She is the current incumbent of District 2 running for mayor. Keely, thank you for joining us. I've got Matt Panetta on the line who's going to help with this interview. So just a quick few reminders for people. Um, early voting has already started today, October 13th. Um, election day is November 3rd. So we're going to go ahead and let Keely introduce herself. Hi, everybody. I'm coming to you live from my bedroom, which seems to really bother everybody. But I do want to go on record and say that it's the only place where I can close the door and limit my two dogs and three boys from coming in and, and jumping all over me. So I'm sorry that this seems to bother some people, but it's all I got. So. I just wanted to, to clear the air there. It seems to be an issue at every um, debate that, that I've had lately. So um, I've been on council since 2015. I absolutely love it. My heart is in it. I just want to serve. I consider myself as the middleman. Um, I want to make sure that people know that local government can work for them. And when I get an email and I respond back and some somebody is surprised, like, wow, you know, that was fast. You shouldn't have that reaction. You should, you should know that that is what you should expect from your local representative um, and municipal government. So we are here to, to work for you. And I think that a lot of people don't realize that. And um, so my goal from the beginning was to kind of bring that concept back uh, to make sure that uh, people feel directly represented and um, know that I'm approachable. If you see me out anywhere, people come up to me in all different sorts of places and talk to me about issues or um, even, even things that are really great happening in their lives. So. You touched on something in your introduction. Um, so you do have a reputation uh, for being one of the first council members to respond to any issue um, and Keely handle citizens, huh? Keely on the spot, yeah. Keely on the spot, yeah. And handling citizen complaints and issues um, immediately. So as mayor, how do you get all of council to take up this mantle that you have? Um, well, I, everyone's still gonna be who they are, right? I mean, I'm not gonna be able to change people. I feel like, you guys know when you go to vote who you're voting for, who's going to respond to you and who won't. Um, I don't plan on changing. I plan on continuing to do the job that I'm doing for the whole city. And um, I hope that if new people come onto council, they take that in and they do the same. But, um, you know, as mayor, I, I, I can't say you've got to do this. You know, I mean, I wish I could, but you know, that, that's up to the people that are representing their districts and hopefully they follow suit and feel like it's, you know, necessity, um, like some of us do, but, you know, that's, you know, up to, up to them how they, how they do it. One of the things that you talked about in, in your questionnaire, um, because we, we kind of put a thing out there like, uh, you know, going forward, what is, what is the thing that you want to jump on? Um, that, you know, I, I don't know if it's something that you, you would necessarily define your, uh, your mayorship. Is mayorship a word? That sounds like a word, right? Um, anyway, uh, you mentioned a, a, a mayor's population health, health initiative and task force. And, and in your answer, you talked about uh, the, the fact that, uh, you know, we have uh, control or we can control the built environment. Uh, can you tell us uh, a little bit about what that, you know, task force would look like and, and ways that, uh, that we, we can uh, control the built environment? Well, it comes from the philosophy that um, as government officials, as municipal representatives, we have the, our job is to, right, create policy. And within that part of our duty, I think our ultimate duty is to make sure that people's health is, is protected. That's part of our job. And I think at even one time in one of the um, surveys, I saw my opponent say the same thing, that public health is pretty much a mandate of, of city council, it's up to us. Um, and so we have to be able to look at that and evaluate that aspect of it in every single one of our policies, safety, health. And if we're not doing it, we're not doing our job correctly. 
you, you kind of touched on some things and, and uh, you know, that I, I would like to explore. Um, when we talk about health, uh, one of the things that's always been important to me is Denton has an F uh, rating uh, for our air uh, by the American Lung Association. I have a kid with asthma. Uh, he wound up in the hospital a few years. We don't have a pediatric health care, you know, a pediatric emergency room here. Um, you know, so our air quality is bad. Uh, a lot of it had to do with, with fracking. Um, you know, recently we've had uh, the, the dominant health care issue of uh, COVID and, and how city council um, basically makes policy or, or tries to uh, protect um, the town. That, that's something that, you know, I don't think a lot of people that we'd actually experienced or, or seen come to council before. Um, can you talk about your uh, your insight and the things that, uh, you know, kind of informed, um, you know, your decisions and your goals uh, regarding health and, and the things you've had to vote on? Um, well, you mentioned your child with asthma. Um, so I know that there are a lot of individuals in the city of Denton who have asthma. Um, that was, fr you kind of go back to fracking. I, I'm ex going back way back to when I got involved. Part of the main reason that I got involved on city council and as a, represent as a representative was to make sure that our community was um, being careful and in, in development and listening to those around who were concerned about those things that other people didn't seem to con be concerned about, right? Like, you know, um, if you're sick, you know, if you have allergies, if you have asthma, you know, cancer, what's causing cancer, where's that coming from? So when, I, when I'm thinking about my uh, mayor population um, health initiative, what I wanna do is get a task force together of people in the community and those who are very educated in, in health and look at the policies that we've had, the policies that we can create and see how that centers around, um, if the policies we're creating are, are, are have a negative impact on our community or vice versa, right? Because that's really important. Um, and also part of that is the economic development aspect comes in. Like you said, we don't have a pediatric um, area here for those. So if, if a child is sick, they have to be transported to another city if they're really sick. And that really bothers me. If, if there's only one hospital where you can go and have a baby, you know, that's, that's not really great. People are going to Flower Mound to have their children. You know, why are they doing that? Um, I did a study and pulled up some data and we are lacking in, in specialists. You know, and some of the hospitals are lacking doctors. Some doctors don't want to move here. Why don't they move here? So you kind of get down this rabbit hole when you start talking about health because it, it encompasses everything. So, um, yeah, so that's, that's where I want to go with that. I'm not sure if I answered your question because I got so far off of it. Um, but those are things that are really important to me. And I think they're important to our community and we will find that out um, eventually. I have made decisions regarding the mask um, order and um, did that when the government, uh, when the governor, sorry, uh, wouldn't and the county commissioners did not. Uh, we did see some data today from uh, Dr. Richardson uh, who, who did actually make a recommendation to pass the, or the mask ordinance that I think during the time when we passed it, we were way above the governor's threshold um, for uh, positivity in cases. And since then, you've seen it come way down. I mean, that, that could be, you know, it, it seems like there's a correlation there between mask wearing and social distancing and following the guidelines, which we're doing. Um, so I, I'm glad that we did that when we did. There's no telling um, if, if we didn't do that, well, then the mayor soon followed after um, all of the turmoil that we went through here on city council for that vote. Um, and then the next one would be gas well setbacks and, and the fracking ban. And uh, those, are other, those are other votes that, that I made in regards to public health. 
and I want to say this, and, and you know, I, you don't necessarily have to comment on it, but but one of the things that I, I think was really fascinating uh, about the, the the gas well, the reverse setbacks and, and um, vote that came up recently, and, and just so people uh, understand, uh, we'll do a real quick level set. Uh, when we're talking about gas wells, there, there's two different a aspects to it. There is a, a setback level of how close uh, someone can come and put a gas well to your house. And, and there's also uh, the reverse setback, which says, hey, there's already an existing well here. How close can we build a house to it? And, and both of those have uh, impacts on it. Now, uh, the setback has been a, a thousand feet for forever, um, but was it was it? I thought not I, not forever. I mean, it was, I mean, it yeah. was 1200. It was 1200 before the ban. And then um, when the uh, HB 40 passed, we lessened it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it was greater at one time. It seems like forever. <laughs> um, but yeah, okay, because uh, HB that's been like, oh, it's only been th three years. Um, but you know, the reverse setback is how close you can build a house to it. Uh, when we had that vote, because it'd been, I think, what, 250 feet um we moved it to 500. one of the things that your opponent kept on talking about was was, was takings and one of the things that bothered me in this conversation was um there was never a conversation about whether or not you know we should be capping wells because a, a lot of the uh, production the fracking production that's gone on around here is, is drying up and a lot of that production is moving to the permian basin but um, anyway, I, I just wanted to make that point because whenever we hear this, I always feel like it's like a, a, a false dilemma where people say you, you can't do this without there being takings. Um, there's never a discussion on, hey, well, why don't we just, you know, cap those old wells so that way people can build houses and not lose their property values and maximize their property values. Anyway, um, do you have any thoughts on that or? or well, yeah, I mean, you make a great point. I think at even one time in the discussion, I said the land is definitely more valuable at this point than what's under it. And it used to be the reverse, right? And so um, when we had these conversations and discussions about the setbacks, we were trying to, or at one point talked about incentivizing developers to cap those wells to um, develop on top. And a lot of them have just done it on their own because, you know, it's, they can make more money building a house there than they can, you know, um, not. So uh, it, it's worked out. And, and I will say for the setback discussion, um, that's been brought up a lot. And every time it, it gets brought up, you know, numbers change, it gets a little bit more um, scarier and scarier uh, in, in the uh, conversation. I've lost billions on it. So I'm just going to. Yes. Yeah. So that's, it's gotten that way. And, you know, many lawsuits and, um, uh, our, our would have come, but really, I think what has gotten away from that conversation is what we did do, right? We expanded that safety area from 250 feet to 500 feet, which isn't amazing, but it's, it's good, right? It's better. And that's all you, you can hope for a little bit at a time, right? Is, is better. It adds a little bit more safety, uh, to the, the homes around. And what we did do in the conversations, and I'm very happy that we did, and it did not come up in the first um, ordinance in 2016, I think when we were talking about it, is the uh, non-conforming versus conforming. Um, it, it wasn't even considered to make those conforming. We didn't even, uh, because we were listening to, to legal and it never really came up. In this conversation, it did. And we were able to listen to the homeowners, listen to people who were saying, hey, how about this? Or have you thought about this? Can we, we don't want this. Here's what's gonna happen if you do this, right? So government, government sometimes make mistakes. We don't always have the right answers, but we have to be able to, to listen and change things as we learn them. And so when we made that vote, not only did we make the homes around it safer, we made it the homes at 250 and 500 conforming so that they didn't have <clears throat> insurance issues anymore. And, um, and so I, I, I'm glad that I took that vote because it accomplished two things that day. And I'm glad you mentioned the, the conforming and the non-conforming because, um, you know, when we, when people have these conversations, they go, you're either, uh, you know, you're either against fracking 
or uh, you know you're against you know uh, if you're if you're against fracking you're against my my right to have property um, you know and, and it was a complex and, and sometimes heated uh, evening I think you guys were there to like one o'clock in the morning uh, but in the end y'all y'all did work together and find a solution that uh, that helped everybody and, and and I think that was like a really important night it, you know I loved watching that. Yeah, it was it was good. It was a good night. And um, I, I think that a lot of negative has been tried to be pulled from it because of the what ifs and how dare you kind of discussions. But if you think about what what we accomplished, I think it was, you know, it's good, especially for those homes in the 250 feet who have been nonconforming for, you know, a couple of years. So um, we finally got got it right. So you had mentioned earlier um, the the mask ordinance and, and your vote on the mask ordinance. So I was going to ask, uh, what steps as mayor um, will you take to move us forward into a post-COVID Denton or hopefully what we hope will be a post-COVID Denton? Well, um, it's recovery is going to be different um, in a way. We're going to have to talk about resiliency. You know, what we do, we, we've already started looking at our emergency our EMO, it's not just about weather anymore. You know, we're going to have to look at, you know, pandemics, get up to date on that. Um, so re resiliency is one of them. The population health that hopefully the task force will come up and that will be a charge of theirs too. Um, as far as economic development, we're going to have to, we're going to have to make sure there's funding in our community for for housing, for people, for businesses. Those are things that um, we're, we're just gonna have to do. Uh, so health, resiliency, and economics. Those are the three things that we'll need to focus on. And, and first responders, I mean, they, they did a really good job. Um, they were prepared. Our uh, fire chief had the stuff that he needed. And I was, um, first thing that happened, I, I called or I messaged and I said, do you have everything that you need? You know, and that, well, to the city manager and he checked and they were said, yes. So they were very well prepared, um, making sure that, that we have stock and that we have what we need for the future. Um, not that this is going to go away and happen again, but just as it continues. So you mentioned a couple of things in terms of economic development and, and, and uh, a minute ago, it just, you know, early on, you talked about uh, having a uh, you know specialists in the hospital uh, where you know there's obstetricians. You talked about uh, just a second ago about affordability. Um, just a real quick thing, and I, th I think you're kind of like me in this one. Uh, I, I moved to Denton, you know, uh, to go to college back in the '90s, and uh, it was one of those places that you know eventually I found my way back to because I, I loved the town. Um, we see the way uh, prices, home prices, affordability is going right now. I think a lot of the people who are moving to Denton, you know, and, and becoming adults at, at this time, uh, have a probably a less opportunity to stay here. So, how do we, um, you know, make it affordable for people to stay in Denton? You know, I mean, you, you talked about, you know, hey, have babies here, stay here. Um, what are things that we can do to to try and keep from running people out of the town that they're loved? Well, for homeowners, we can increase the, the homestead exemption. Um, we could start there. Um, that's one part of it. Um, affordability, it's, I know that you've asked other people that and we've been asked that. And um, my answer is uh, you have more housing, the housing that you have is gonna be more affordable, right? So, um, but you have to do it in a smart way. You can't just build houses upon houses upon houses. You have to make houses that that are um, affordable for individuals to live in or have units or townhomes for people if they want to rent. Um, I've heard a statistic that there are a lot of younger people that are looking to rent now instead of, instead of buy. And so we just wanna make sure that we have a variety of housing stock um, and that we're not all sprawling out. Uh, I've been reading some books lately on uh, the cost of infrastructure and really, the more infrastructure we put in, it's going to cost the city um, in the long run to afford. So if we want to lower taxes and make it more affordable, we have to look at the debt we're creating on our side and all the stuff that we're building in the name and the sake of growth. 
and try to kind of reel it in for a little bit and just, uh, just try to refocus. I thought you were going to ask me about frozen chicken. Uh, uh, no, I think we pretty much have that covered. <laughs> uh, we might, do we want to ask about the best chicken tenders? No, we'll, we'll, do, we'll avoid that one. Yeah. Well, um, can I just make a comment about that? OK. Yeah, well, not necessarily on that end, just that I I've seen comments and I've, I've seen people say that, you know, I'm, I'm not a business person. You know, I, I will, I'll be a good mayor because I'll care about you, but I don't know this side of it. And that's not true. I do. I do know that side of it. I know incentives. I know economic development. And it's not that I'm against incentives at all. I have voted on plenty of them and I think they can be used in a really great way. But, you know, there's other tools in our toolbox that we need to start using. And like I said before, there's no amount of money that's going to make a business come to a city if it's a bad investment. So we need to create that city that that business wants to come to, whether or not we have money for them or not. So it's just kind of looking at it in a different way. So, so that kind of kind of morphs into an, a, a, you know, a question I was going to ask. So when we talk about growth, we know that we have, uh, you know, a coal hunter that's coming in and that's going to be dropping a, a city about the size of Flower Mound on, on Denton. Um, we, you know, growth is coming, right? Um, how do we uh, create that city that you talked about? Um, and, and how do we maintain things that make Denton Denton, you know, in, in the process? Well, people, the people make Denton Denton right? Denton is a place that cares. Um, the, the artist, the, the creativity, the uniqueness. So um, as long as we take care of the people here, we're going to have the Denton that we want. Um, it's when those people who make Denton who it is start leaving, you know, and, and other people that are looking for different things start moving in, you know, that's when we have an issue or a problem. So um, making sure that what we do now um, sets up an environment for the people that live here to want to stay here and thrive and create and, you know, can create. That's a, that's a big part of it. Um, as far as Hunter and Cole Ranch, um, yeah, I, that, that is a definition of sprawl. And I'll just go on record because I did vote against it. I didn't vote against it because I don't want development, right? I voted against it because it is um, another layer of government and it's an extra tax, right? And I don't think that's fair to other developments that, that have to do it a different way, right? Um, and we talk about Robeson, Robeson came in and, and did it in phases like other developments have to do, right? They can afford it, they build it, and then they afford it and they build it. And so um, this is just gonna be so much so fast I, I'm just, I'm not really sure how, how it's going to affect us, but you know, it will. And next year, 2021, we're going to talk about redistrict, redistricting. Um, it's coming up soon. So we're going to have to, to um, think about that. The city council ethics ordinance clearly had some issues when it was first adopted. Um, we've seen some recommended changes be made. Um, are there any improvements in particular that you would like to see? I would like to see the, um, the conflict, uh, probably updated some, the, there's, I'll, I'll just say that there's a lot of mixed emotions about the ethics ordinance, but for me, because we didn't have one when I got on council and I, I was in the middle of a lot of stuff that was going on. I just felt so happy and I celebrated when we did get something, you know, so uh, for me, I, I don't like to talk bad about it, but I know there's a lot of people that are unhappy with it and it does need to be fixed in certain areas. Um, but it, it is working if, you know, people are filling out conflict forms and recusing themselves where at one time they, you know, may have not. So, um, I am looking forward to hearing what the ethics um, committee is, has coming up on that and will be willing to make changes that they agree to. 
Uh, well, uh, I want to thank you for, for joining us uh, tonight and everything. I, I know that, you know, early voting started today. Uh, you had a council meeting uh, today that you finished right before you got it. So I know it's a, it's, and uh, I don't remember if you had your kids fed yet. Uh, so I don't want to keep you too long, but I, I want to thank you for taking the time to make sure that, uh, you know, you spoke to everyone in, in Denton Matters and kind of uh, reminded us of everything that you've done over the years. Real quick, um, election coming up on, on November 3rd. Uh, people are voting right now. Um, give us a couple of minutes on why you're the one. Uh, so I don't really like to talk about myself so much if you haven't noticed. I, I, I think about we and team and you know we, we can do this and that kind of sets me apart a little bit I think from uh, my opponent. Uh, so I'll just kind of go from there. So I feel like we're in this together. I want to feed off of the community and have the community um, help me uh, guide them. But as mayor, you know, it's, I'm just one person out of uh, six. And so it, there's not a way where the mayor can just control everything. It's uh, majority rules. And that's, I think sometimes people forget that we're not a strong mayor city. Um, and I want to find a way for our council to work together and for every council member to be heard so that they can represent their district um, the way they were elected to uh, and you know provide that um, unity for our council to work for our city together. Um, that's, like I said earlier, I'm not going to do anything different as a mayor that I didn't do in District 2. Uh, I'll add probably a few more meetings, uh, a business roundtable, you know, some some things as far as engagement goes. But on the votes, uh, how I represent myself, uh, my family, everything's going to stay the same. I'm not going to change who I am. And I one thing I take pride in, and I feel like I've done is stayed consistent over the years um, from 2015. I think people. Hopefully, my goal is that. When they vote for me, they know who they're voting for and they're not gonna, you know, in a month go, man, why did I vote for her? You know, like that's that's not what I want. I want people to go, yes, I knew it, you know. So that's that that's what I want people to take with them when they go to vote. Uh, so real real quick, uh, real quick recap on, on voting. Um, early voting is happening right now. Today is October 13th. Um, so during the period of early voting, if you're uh, wanting to get out there and, and get it done, at this stage, you can vote anywhere in the county, whichever one's most convenient for you. Make sure you go out. This is a special uh, election, uh, special in many ways. Um, because of COVID, the uh, municipal elections are also happening on the same ballot as presidential state. So make sure you flip over your ballot uh, where you'll see uh, your, you know, the municipal races. Um, in the municipal races, these are nonpartisan races. There's not gonna be a D, there's not gonna be an R there. So we're encouraging everyone to make sure you do your homework. If there is something that you're passionate about and you've identified your candidate, talk to your friends and your family and make sure they hear you and, and they have their questions answered. Uh, election day is on November 3rd. Um, thank you, Keely, for joining us. Thank you, Thank Tam. you very much. Uh, once again, my name is Matt Pernetta. Uh, this has been the Denton Matters uh, Mayoral Candidate Forum. Um, you're here because Denton Matters and we're here for you because Denton Matters. Thank you. I appreciate it. Happy voting. Thank <laughs> you.